Yeah. They've done a nice job in uh, downtown, turning downtown around. And they have that beautiful event center there where they host, like, national volleyball championships and huge swimming and diving and huge event there. I think they have, like, the national swimming, USA swimming event coming up right now. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big uh, convention center. Old market. It's right across the street, I think, right? Yeah. They've done a lot down there. That College World Series committee has got a bunch of cash down there. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's still hard to kind of like turn the page on the old Omaha, though, like, you know, because it was so unique. In this place, is, don't get me wrong, but the old one was so distinct. It just smelled the way it smelled. You could smell the, you know, like the popcorn and the pretzels and the kind of almost like the dirtiness of the underneath. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just had that old... Yeah, it was the big brother of old all sports stadium. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, that's why I remember being a little kid. Those are your most vivid memories, I think. When you get old, you forget stuff. Oh, you haven't? We played the first game in it the year it opened when I was at Vanderbilt. Yeah, we, we played the first game ever in the new College World Series. No, we played in Omaha. Oh, you made the first? Oh, the first game of the World Series game? Well, the first College World Series game played in it was the year we were there. I, I know they played other games in it, but that was the first Omaha game. Yes, yes, yeah. But we, we, uh, we played the first College World Series game there. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. We had the kid hit the first home run. Cool day, yeah. Sonny Gray um, was our ace. Um, Mike Yastrzemski was our right fielder. Tony Kemp was our second baseman. He's in the big leagues with the Astros. Oh, yeah, we had a really good team. Um, great team. We would have won it that year. Oh, yeah, he'll get up. Yeah, he's a good ball player. We'd have won it, but we were in Florida's bracket. We couldn't, we couldn't beat the Gators that year. Played them seven times. They beat us five. Three regular season, conference championship, SEC championship. And two in Omaha, six. I'm sorry, we played him six times. We were two and four. Yeah, a lot of, lot of playing one team. They were so good, too. Oh, my God. It was so tired. We were like, oh, Florida again. But that's the reality of it. <laughs> then when I got here, everybody's like, well, we played OU seven times that one year. I'm like, that's too much. That's not good. There's no way that close to 10% of your games in one calendar year should be against the same team. So, then we cut that extra midweek game out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> kind of glad we got out of there when we did, to be honest with you. It was enough rest to get ready to go. We got beat Friday. We took Saturday and Sunday off. The only two-day gap, the whole calendar, where you no interest whatsoever in practicing or playing anything. We just you're off. Yeah, we'll see you Monday. I mean, the kids always come around because that's what they do. But in some ways, it might have been a blessing. I don't know. Never find justification for losing, but I mean, that's the reality. Heck yeah, I've been saying it. I say it all the time. Big 12 baseball's good. I just don't get the, don't get the pub. They were pretty close, man. Yeah, they were close. They were close. Yeah. They were close. Josh will go first by himself. Um, then I'm going to bring in Thomas Hatch, Tyler Buffett, um, Trey Cobb, and Jensen Elliott up here. We'll be together. Four pitchers. And then uh, Costello, Hassel, and Walton, up, three of them together up there. Um, do your thing there. And any, if you need one-on-ones with any, anybody,
let me know, and they'll, they'll they're all here. All the starting position players are here. All the pitchers are here. So if you just let me know, <coughs> you might want to talk to me post press conference stuff. So I'll be grabbing it for you. Great. Josh, is this a day off? No. Y'all are working today. Yes. We will be out there at four o'clock. The week will get by you fast. I mean, practice today and tomorrow, and we travel Thursday. So, what time Thursday? We fly out. I think 10, 10 a.m. out of Oklahoma City. I think. So it's fast week, really fast. Whatever you guys want. I'm Coach Holiday, how are you approaching this week with your players and preparation? And, uh, how, what's your plan? <clears throat> well, we've tried to approach every week of the season with the goal of winning a week. And I think it's important to have something consistent so you can mentally relate to what you're trying to do. During the season, you have a, a three-game series and a midweek game, and your goal is to always be, you know, three and one or four and zero. Oh. You want to win the week, and when you look at how that kind of translates out through the course of the year, um, you know, last weekend our goal was to win the week, which would have been two out of three to advance, and same with the the, the regional. So, our goal now is to to change that um, new challenge, which is to to go out this this week and get back on that mindset, get back in a routine of practicing and preparing. And uh, not allowing our minds to race. I think it's important to keep your mind in in the proper place, and that allows your thoughts to be controlled. And then from there, I think it allows you to find that sense of normalcy at a time when nothing's normal. And so that's a a, a good thing for us because I think we've learned how to do that. And so we're going to just uh, enjoy the time together and get back into a practice routine, knowing we get to we get to be together. And uh, that in and of itself will, I think, help us get back into that frame of mind. Is this a little bit of a challenge? Uh, you've done a great job of, of leaving the carrot way out there and living in the moment. Mm -hmm. That's your words, living in the moment. Mm -hmm. Now the moment is Omaha. I mean, you've got a lot of seniors that probably can handle that. Do you worry at all about the younger players, and how do you handle that part of it? Well, uh, it would be irresponsible to not be prepared for that. So we've got a plan, and we're going to get our team to Omaha Thursday morning as early as possible to adjust to the fact that we're there and get that out of our system by the middle of the day so we can then get to practicing and preparing to compete there. Um, and, and then I think it's important to get that excitement of that under control because that's a real human feeling that you can't deny nor should you so go get there go look at the stadium look around the stadium see the people acknowledge you are there and then say we're here to play and then go to work on getting ready to play and so the fact that we play the early game on day one if you were playing day two, you may have longer to realize you're there. But in playing early game day one, I want to get there as soon as we can so we can then get the excitement of being there out of the way and get back to the task at hand, and that is to play. And so, yes, to answer your question, it's a different challenge, but it's a great one. And there's ways to be ready for it, just like we've taken on the road. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeff. Yeah. So, uh, guys who played for Coach Ward, guys who played for your dad, uh, how much feedback or response? Did you get like on Sunday and then yeah. subsequent to that? Unbelievable. Like 298 text messages. And I'm down to like seven I haven't gotten back to. And I apologize to those seven, but just it, it is probably the coolest thing to see how many guys were watching and guys that I haven't heard from that went to the trouble to get my phone number just to tell me, to tell Rob and the kids how excited they are. That is a powerful thing so yeah um from robin to brad bean blossom to monty ferris to jim Tra i mean i just Iflin. jimmy Iflin, jim traber i mean the list goes on and on i don't want to leave anybody out but just to hear those guys watching uh knowing how many years removed from this they are is uh it's cool it is uh for me maybe that's the coolest thing maybe that's really what this is just of a personal standpoint that's probably the neatest thing 25 runs in two games in the Big 12, and then did you 
Are you hopeful or confident that you can get back to this level and sustain it? I was confident. I wasn't hopeful. I think hope is a, I think that's a weak word. I think confident because Rob, Rob is so good at what he does. I mean, let's just be honest. The guy's magic. Um, and I don't say that. I say that because he sees in the kids what buttons to push. We came back from the Big 12. He had a plan. We got to work on Monday. He believed in the kids. They feel that. They respond to that. He's a master teacher. He understood the psychology of where some kids were at. He made a very strong decision to flip roles. And I never doubted it one second. I mean, I'm smart enough to know how, how good a coach he is, and, and I trust him. We, we always talk about things, but I know instinctively his feel for what's going on is exceptional. So um, I wasn't worried about it. I really wasn't. I know other people wanted me to be or felt like I needed to be reactionary to it, but I wasn't. Um, those were just a couple of tough innings, big deal. I mean, conference tournaments across the country were ugly. How many ugly scores and bad innings were there? They were everywhere. ACC, SEC, Big 12, they're everywhere. Kids are tired. The feel is hard as a rock because you're playing games on it. The wind's blowing 40 miles an hour. I mean, that happens. And honestly, if you overplay that with your team in that moment, that's dangerous. So we chose not to go that direction. We chose to believe in them. And, and the response, I think what you saw was as well as any OSU pitching staff's ever pitched in the postseason. Your guys out to the outfield after that loss to Texas, and you talked to him for quite a yep. while. Was that in the message, or was it some different things that you talked to him? No, I told him I, I can't believe this just happened, and neither can you. But you know what? It did. So forget about it. We're going to play next week, and we're going to play good. And uh, same guys are going to be out there. It's going to be a different result, and uh, we're going to take advantage of this by resting our minds and our emotions so that we're recharged, ready to play again. That was it. Um, because as much as that hurt and stung, it really didn't have an impact on our season unless we chose to allow it to. So we made the decision not to. So when, you, when you let them go or when you got on the bus at, at, at the brick, did you feel like they had done that or did, was it going to take a minute? You, you mentioned before yeah. you got started two yeah. days off. Yeah, they respond pretty quickly. I, uh, they really do. And um, we've never gotten over, we never overreact here. We're not yellers and screamers or overreactors. So. We don't want them to be that either. And um, they'll listen to you and trust you if you tell them the truth. That was the truth. It was just a couple of tough games. But it wasn't going to define our season unless we sat there and allowed it to. And uh, yeah, it meant we probably wouldn't host. OK, big deal. So what? I mean, like I said, we've gone to Omaha 96 and 99. We went through someone else's territory. So if we're going to create this thing that the only way you go to the College World Series to have a storybook perfect ride, well, that's a ridiculous story. We're not paying attention to what really goes on. Would we have liked to have played at home? Well, sure, but what are we going to do? Just cash it in because it's not perfect? Heck no, we're tough. These kids are tough, so why can't we take on a tough road? And they they agreed. The way you've done that has impressed a lot of people. A lot of people like Oklahoma State in the College World Series because, in fact, I like Mike Rooney. He said this is a team that's seen their ghost during the season a couple of times and, and has, has come back to life from it. Uh, he also mentioned... Your, your club matches up pretty well with the ballpark. Can you uh, assess that, defense and pitching? Um, well, I think on the first end of it, um, our team, we chose to challenge our team this year with scheduling aggressively. And the aggressive schedule uh, revealed us early on and showed us what to get better at. So one, that was good. Uh, two, this team finished second in a conference that's sending three teams to Omaha. Oh, so the conference is actually better than people thought. So. Um, I think we stared ourselves down pretty strong all year long, to be honest with you. We had one bad weekend. We lost to Texas Tech here, and we played poorly, and they kicked our tail. But other than that, I mean, these kids are, these kids are sturdy now. There's some sturdy kids in that line that played a lot of innings. There's some courage. Uh, there's mental toughness. There's excellent pitching. There's high-level defense, and there's an offense that's come on. So uh, I've talked to people about this. I'm very proud of these kids. They've, they've dug in there all year long. Uh, the leadership of Donovan and Corey in particular on the field every single day as seniors, these kids are so invested here. Nothing was going to knock them off of this mission, nothing. And it didn't matter how tough it was early or tough in the middle, they never backed off. And they spread that across their group and their group became theirs. And uh, you could go up and down the line and talk about the positive impact each one of these kids has had on this team. So I feel like they're very tough. I feel like we will pitch well and play defense there. It is a uh, unique ballpark and that it is big. 
spacious and at times if the wind blows in it can be a challenging ballpark in which to score so just get back to the fundamentals of throwing strikes catching it and and offensively generating enough runs to win can you talk a little bit about jr davis and what he's brought to the lineup since joining the program yeah an awesome story that's about as uh, unassuming and humble a kid as you'll ever ever meet um to watch him fight through injury this fall he was uh uh, didn't get to play last year in junior college due to a, a transfer issue. Not his fault, but just worked out that way. He's never, ever done anything but work hard, smile, and say thank you. I mean, this kid's a special kid. He's played unbelievably well. One of the, the better offensive players, uh, certainly in the leadoff spot, and, and his defense has grown tremendously. Coach Valade's worked with him so much, and his defense has grown into a real strength. So JR's a beautiful kid. These guys were part of last postseason or even the postseason before that. How did those two endings shape and prepare them for this run? Well, <clears throat> all three years for the kids that have been here now for four years or three, every year has taught us something. Every stage of us evolving has taught us something. Uh, the first team was just courageous enough to get us back to competitive and went into a regional and fought hard and won some games. And the second team was amazingly unified the the energy and connection of that group was just dangerous if you touched it you know they were amazingly unified kids and we got to the super regional portion and we were here at home and we just weren't quite ready for that step i guess i don't know but that team as much as any team the love of that team uh the emotion of that team and those kids was powerful last year's team was just rugged and tough and i think we ran out of gas a little bit at the end but I think every stage of this, these kids have learned, and our program has grown as to how to handle this next time we see it and handle it better. And I think we were ready for this challenge to take the next step as a team. And most importantly is to continue taking the step this week and not just be satisfied with going to the College World Series, but to go there with the intent to win. And so I, I believe that. I think we, we, we grew as a group and we've grown as a program and the personalities inside it took great notes each of those years. And uh, the kids are better, better performers. Uh, I think certainly as a coach you grow and uh, I, I think it's just part of evolving and, and trying to become great. You talked about when you took the job, Josh, about restoring sort of your tradition and embracing that and teaching the guys what that all was all about and getting back to the series. Does that sort of connect the dots a little bit for these guys even more? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just so cool to see them, you'll walk up on them one day and they don't even know you're there and they're in the locker room watching an old tape. And you just hear them talking about it and just listen like, what do you guys think of that? Like, oh man, that was awesome. You know, and it's, it's, a, it's a video of Pete slamming his helmet after hitting a home run or it, it's just these, these momentary clips that they come across of Robin getting a base hit in the College World Series and you just kind of catch them on that and then every now and then you can hear them just kind of emotionally connecting to that now to see him physically connecting to it is just like a um it's just it, you don't deserve anything in sports but there's a there's there's a part of this for these kids that they've they've earned this and so i think in many ways it's full circle and uh yeah these kids feel like the the interlocking os and that panel across the front of our chest belong back on that field they've seen that before they wanted it again you talked about it just a second ago, evolving as a coach. Mm -hmm. How do you think you have evolved over these last few years? Well, <clears throat> have the greatest assistant coaches you could hope for. I mean, my gosh, um, you're only as good as your assistant coaches and your staff. Uh, I get to come to work and watch people work their tails off every day and serve these kids. Probably the, the smartest thing or the best thing I've done is, is have all those great people. Um, <clears throat> and that started with Coach Holder. Honestly, the, the day he hired me, uh, the greatest wisdom someone could offer you as a young head coach is to surround yourself with people that are probably smarter or better than you. Um, and we drove to Tulsa and hired Rob, and that was Coach Holder's leadership and commitment to baseball of wanting to provide us everything we needed in terms of care for kids. Uh, and then Marty joined our staff, and then James has replaced Marty and brought his own unique, valuable presence to this program. And then all the awesome young people that work here every day um, that is what I'm most proud of is the care level of all the people that serve our players. Uh, I have no idea how someone would evaluate me. Um, 
I, uh, I probably swallowed my tongue when that ball was hit to JR. And then when I got it back out of my throat, I realized you know, that just happened. So I don't really know. I just know that uh, the people are what make this go. The team and the players are why you do this. And I think I was lucky at a young age to know that and learn that from the right people. And as long as you stay focused on that, I guess other people will tell you whether you've gotten better or not. But it's about your staff. It's about your players. It's about loving them. And it's about uh, people looking out for you along the way. So I'm lucky a lot of people have done that. A little bit of this is, is some Cinderella stuff in this World Series. When you talk about UC Santa Barbara, I didn't realize they don't even have lights where they play. That they're, they're kind of one of those ragtag programs that, that is really overachieved. Uh, then, of course, Coastal Carolina is a really good team, but they've never been before. And you draw one of the Cinderella's right off the bat. What do you know about UCSB? I think you probably described them great. And I think that's how they'd see themselves. So they have that kind of free-spirited belief that they're meant to be there. And I tell you what, and seeing the highlight of how they got there and looking through the teams they navigated through to get there, they should feel that way. Um, and I got a group of kids that feel the same way because we went through – two of the more difficult venues in college baseball against a power ACC team and a power SEC team to get there. So every team that's there landed there via some story. They have a great story, and, and so do we. So that's what you'd expect this time of year, and uh, I think they're good. I mean, I've seen a little bit of tape. I look forward to beginning the preparation cycle tonight and watching film, but um, what an awesome story. I mean, awesome, right? But that's why you play the games. You know, had you just gone off the brackets and the stats and the reputations, UCSB doesn't get through Vanderbilt and Louisville. But they did. So compliments to them. Does the NCAA have predetermined seedings for the tournament or pairings, maybe? Seeding, not seeding is not the right word. Pairings for the tournament? You know, somebody coming um, out of this regional is in this spot, yeah. somebody coming out of this one. It's my understanding, at least, if you look at the bracket, that you assume the spot in the bracket of the national seed from which your journey took you. So it would be my understanding that we're whatever national seed in this tournament Clemson was. Is that right? And we match up with the corresponding national seed that uh, Louisville was. Is that accurate? Seven and two? Yes. Yeah, so, yes, sir. I, I don't think. Yeah, we don't reseed once they see which eight teams are there. We, we, we play in the bracket from which we started, and then whoever makes it to the end essentially finds themselves in the one, eight, four, five, and then vice versa. Yeah. Josh, how important has John Mattel been to what y'all have done as a team? And not just because of what he does on the field, but you know, being a guy you're familiar with, huh? you know, grew up in this program in a lot yeah. of ways. John's played his best baseball the last two weeks. He's been really important. Um, as of late, he was red hot at Clemson, red hot. He had a little bit of a stomach virus for three or four days, and he bounced back and, and had a huge moment Sunday with the base hit and the stolen base that started our rally. And and John brings a, you know that that desire to be a cowboy to this program that I thought was so important. We recapture where kids are really stinking proud of Oklahoma State. And when it says it across your chest, you play a little bit bigger because of it. And he certainly brings that, as do many of the kids. Um, he was part of our goal to capture Oklahoma. Uh, when you look at how the game ended with a kid from Broken Arrow pitching, and uh, you start looking around the diamond, you got a kid from UConn at third, you got a Bishop Kelly kid playing short, you got a kid from Stillwater and right, another kid from Stillwater and left. And recapturing our talent in our own state to play for the Cowboys was part of our initial push. And uh, John bought into that early, and uh, obviously with Jim being here. But you know, each kid, you got to recruit them ind independently of their, their factors, right? Um, sure, I'm sure people thought it was a slam dunk, but John's his own man. He had many choices. And you have to recruit the kid for his life and not for the one that you would just think he would follow in line for. So John was a big get for us. But the great thing about John Littell, every single day, that's the same kid. He is always ready to work. He's pleasant. I love being around him unbelievable work ethic and just a he's a kid that just he, he makes you go Josh, you talked about the venues that you guys spent the last 10 days or two weeks almost in um you know that's a part of the country where college baseball is second only to college football yeah. and their venues reflect that you obviously are on the docket for something different here but how important is that and i mean you guys have obviously gotten where you've gotten without 
a Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. But how important is it long term to have that? Well, I mean, our goals long term, Jenny, are to, to be the best. That's what we set out to do. That's what um, brought us back to Oklahoma State was to, to be the best. And, and with trying to be the best, obviously long term is um, all the things that, that show your athletes and allow you to train your athletes at the highest level. And it, it's all across our campus. That commitment to excellence here is everywhere. It's, it's up the street. It's across the street. It's to your right. It's to your left. So we understand as a university um, what first class and, and training athletes is all about. And we're very committed to doing that for this program. And we've got great people that work every day to, to take us where we want to go. So we'll just keep grinding away at it until that's a reality. And uh, we know we're cared for and loved. And we treat our kids uh, like a million bucks every single day. And uh, as I've told people before, I, I liken it to to a house that maybe is a little bit older, but what goes on inside it is is perfect. It's it's just a family, and you take care of each other, and you love each other, and uh, that's a better environment than going to some big brand new house where no one talks to each other, or that it's so stinking big no one ever sees each other, or whatever. Uh, I like to think that what goes on inside the walls outweighs uh, how big or fancy the walls are, but. Those things do matter in the grand scheme of where you're trying to go, but as I've told these kids in the short term, um, when you wake up every single day, the first thing that influences your happiness in life are the people you surround yourself with. And if you like those people when you run into them each day, you're gonna be a happy camper. And if those people aren't right, it doesn't matter how fancy everything else is, it's not what you signed up for. So we got the people part right, and uh, we, we're very proud of what we do have. Josh, I heard your comment out in South Carolina regarding the draft and the timing of it and, yeah. and fully agree with it, but back in the old days uh, when the calendar was a little different, the draft actually happened for teams while they were in Omaha. Now that the draft, and, and it was good news mm -hmm. for a lot of kids on your ball club, yeah. now that it's over, yeah. does that normalize and now they can kind of, okay, I know where my future is now, yeah. I deal with my present? I'll choose to say you're exactly right with what you just said and not comment on how I really feel about the draft happening while we're actually playing games and practicing. That is the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my life. Would anyone be in the Final Four worrying about getting drafted with a cell phone on the bench? Honestly, I mean, let's, let's just get current. I mean, this one thing I'm passionate about because it pulls away the only thing you work to build and that is focus and connection of your kids for your team. Can we not find a three-day window to allow these kids to play and finish their mission before we have this? That's it. Three days, two days, whatever. Allow these kids a chance to live in the moment rather than sit there. Who wouldn't be interested if they're getting drafted either? I was, okay, but we didn't have cell phones when I was in college. So for kids, I mean, that's not fair. That, I mean, it's just ridiculous, so. To get your blood pressure down, is it good? It's not coming now in Omaha like it used to. Doesn't have to. And back then, no one even knew. You got a telegram or someone told you. You didn't literally sit there and live in the five-second moment that you're, I mean, am I crazy to think that's nuts? You guys, you, you guys can decide. That's how I feel. Did you have telephones back then? Yes, oh, okay. you had to actually remember someone's phone number to call them. <laughs> and call them at their house and they had to answer. What's the explanation Major League Baseball gives for not pushing it? Back? Conveniently, whatever they choose to. As far as it just fits their calendar or television, that's just not right. We're partners. We're partners, NCAA, Major League Baseball partners. We're working to put a great product on the field, great college baseball and develop them. Obviously, we love Major League Baseball. We should partner up and find a solution to that. That would be what really bright people you know, that's the solution. Partner up and fix it. I know Mike Holder is, is frustrated that the new ballpark isn't done yet. But mm -hmm. When you took the job four years ago, did you think you'd be in the park, a new park by now? I trusted Mike Holder the minute uh, he hired me um, because he cares about Oklahoma State the way I do. And his actions and life's work are on display every minute of every day. And I don't really know a whole lot else other than trust. And um, every step of the way, what's been good for OSU baseball, he's stepped forward, whether it's what's good for the players, how to feed them, how to train them, the coaches, whatever. And uh, trust is a very valuable piece for me. And I trust Coach Holder. And I know that whenever we can make something happen, we're going to make it happen. And, uh, but I also know these are real projects. And, and with that comes real planning and you know, things of that nature. So 
Um, you know, it's just when you get that big gift that takes you to the level where you can break ground, mm -hmm. going to Omaha can't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I hope people are excited about it. Yeah, it's been a while, right? 17 years or something. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's all good. It's just all showing that the experience of these kids and the celebration of, of our school and our alumni of being proud of this is a strong thing. That's just a, that's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna, just going to keep working together to do what's best for Oklahoma State. I mean, that's, that's what our mission is, right, is just to, to work together and, and celebrate the success of everybody. And what a great month for our school, you know, with track and tennis. And, I mean, you know, it's just we're, we're, all, we're all a team. We're all a family. We, we work through the good things, and we keep striving for more. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, we all have that vision for sure. But uh, Healthy Thomas Hatch has always been able to pitch. But how much – has he grown or developed as a guy and psychologically on the mound and all that since he got here as a freshman? Amazingly. <laughs> if that's even a word, is that a word? Um, he's grown in so many ways. Uh, and it's really cool because Thomas came in with talent and, and now he is refined, he is skilled, he's mature, um, he communicates well very responsible for himself. Rob, Rob has done an amazing job of helping Thomas create a plan and then watching Thomas execute the plan. It's just really, really special. You know, I can't, if you think about the development of pitching here in the last four years, it's, it's remarkable. Jason Hirsch was a injured redshirt our first year coming off of that injured redshirt. He's a first round pick after Rob's first year. Brendan McCurry is a junior college second baseman and becomes a first-team All-American pitcher in year two. Year three, Mike Freeman is an unheard of and becomes a first-team All-American. In year four, Thomas Hatch misses the entire year before. The next year, he's a first-team All-American, Big 12 Pitcher of the Year. And then you can go down the list of other outstanding pitching accomplishments. So the kids and the time spent and the trust and the communication is just sensational. I, I can't sit here and give enough credit to the people that I watch every day work with these kids. It's amazing. Coach, I think it's been talked about a lot of rounds here, but the final out of the Super Regional, <laughs> you see a lot of teams obviously, you know, yeah. happy and dogpile on the mound. Your team, they were happy, they celebrated, but it was, it was kind of subdued. Yeah. you think that goes to the mentality of there's still work to be done? Yeah, I guess so. I didn't have anything to do with that. That's theirs. You know, there's certain parts of the day that I give to them. It's theirs. And there's certain parts of the day I expect them to give to us. Um, you go to school, do the right thing, you be a great human being, you respect everything that there is in the world that's right. And from there, I'll give you back the freedom to, to have your own team. When they chose to celebrate that way, that's theirs. That's, that's their team. That's how they chose to go out right there in that moment. And, uh, you know, we set out on that trip just kind of saying, we're just not going to be denied. We're just not. And I guess that's how they chose to finish it. Anything else, Coach? Uh, you dogpiling 96 and 99? Damn, we dogpile. Not at Baylor. I don't remember. Yeah, I, did, I did see a cool picture someone put up, though, from 1999. I'm celebrating. And uh, <laughs> much thinner, much more handsome, lots more hair. But I'd never seen the picture before, so that kind of brought back a cool memory. But uh, I honestly don't remember. What about your newest team member, the... Uh, Dinosaur. I don't know much about that either. That was new to me as of uh, Monday. But um, sometimes having fun and just allowing kids some expression is a good thing. I, I trust them. So whatever they choose to, to do with their time, I'm, I'll support them, even if it's a dinosaur. <laughs> and you may not want to share it, but do you have a major concern as you head to Omaha? No. Not at all. We're, we're in a good spot. We're in a good spot. We got we got plus plus energy and and care, and uh, whatever shortcomings we have as a team, we've been overcoming those all year long. Um, so we're gonna line it up and, and fire away, man. We're we're, we're gonna fire away. We're gonna go up there and intend to play well and win.